this son from my mother. Chukuna Kamami. In this video, Pastor Jerry Aze is shared with parents the way they can raise up godly children, just as the way the mother raised him in the ways and the fear of God. This is one of the many videos that you should listen to over and over again. Please like and share to someone. Blessings. Seven commandments to give to every parent. Call it whatever you like, but I want to rather see it like a mandate. I want to give to every parent here. Parents, hear me, number one. Never forget, great children are products of great prayers. Great children are products of great prayers. And I'm going to say this to you. Have you ever wondered, every time God is in need of a generational shifter, every time God is in need of a child that will be exceptional, have you ever thought, so Hannah, after a while, God decided to lock Hannah's womb because God was trying to raise it somewhere. Have you ever thought about it? That every time that there was an exceptional child coming, first of all, God will lock up the womb of the mother to make them begin to pray. There was a John the Baptist that was coming and God had to lock the womb of Elizabeth and they began to pray. The prayer was not just for conception. The prayer was to mold the child that was about to come. Your own womb was not locked up. But please, don't make it an excuse to produce an average child. Sir, I want to let you know that no child's destiny has ever been birthed into greatness outside of the place of prayer. Great prayers produce great children. Whether you want to have children or you already have. Parents, it is not too much. Bring out one day of fasting for your children. Please take out some moment. Great children are products of great prayers. So God will lock up the womb of Elizabeth because he wants the mother to pray. God will be good. Go, go ahead and lock up the womb of Hannah because he wants Hannah to pray. People of God. And the prayers created an environment for those children to be bettered. And I need you to understand there are things that are arranged in the place of prayer you cannot arrange by teaching. There are things that you place in the spirit of a child in the place of prayer. Sir, no school can place it in the spirit of that child. There are destinies you arrange, pathways you arrange. Sir, I want to let you know that no matter how much and how many tutors you bring into the life of that child, that would ever, that would be able, people of God. If you are saying what pastor is saying is 10 commandments of destiny parenting, you might not be wrong. But I need you to understand that great prayers bet great children. Lay your two hands on your head, every parent here. As your amen will thunder, let every spiritual laziness disappear from you. No matter how old your children are, they still need your prayers. So. They still need your prayers. So. And their greatness can still happen. I pray over your life, every laziness in the spirit, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. Let your amen thunder louder. Let me, let me let you what happens. You know, every Friday among the Jews, every Friday, do you know that the fathers, every Friday, the fathers actually bring their children and they bless their children and they speak blessings over the lives of their children. They do that every Friday, every Friday, because there's something called the patriarchal blessings, which the Jews believe so much in the blessings spoken by the father. The authenticity of the blessing spoken by the father. But listen, let me tell you, a powerless father will release empty prophecies. So, I am afraid that, let me speak to men now, who have shifted prayers to their wives. 
your own is that you'll be sleeping while the woman is praying i want to let you know that a time will come in your life you will wish you had power to bless your children but unfortunately you did not build the power base so that when you say to your child that is living it is well with you it will count in the life of that child and it will not be, look like something wishful my parents are just telling me put that in one corner of your mind let me remind you that every parent hear me parenting is a warfare did you hear what I just said right now? Parenting is a warfare. That you have not yet seen the battles of your children does not mean that they are not fighting. Parenting is a warfare. Sir, you sit back, ma, and you teach your children and you think that everything you have said, they have heard you and they have understood you. They go to school and one evil child from one home you know that you can never begin to ask the class that your children are in or their, two, uh, or their parents, where are they coming from? Where, where are they coming from, sir? They come from different places. They come from different places. People of God, there are homes where children are not being parented. Meanwhile, let me say this here. This is one of the things I'm going to say. Never you at the journey of your life become a child for your child to parent. I need to say it again. Let me leave this matter and come to the part. There are homes right now where children are parenting their parents. And sadly, the parents have become children. So because whatever the child wants, he gets. Whatever the, 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 what the, she gets, you know, they are just children. They are just children. So you got to treat them with a, um, a measure of a people of God. That place where they are taking, calling them children, children. You know that place? That place, you and I know, where they are calling them children. In the abroad. That is why a child will wake up and carry gun, enter somewhere, kill everybody there, and all of that. At the end of the day, they will call it one name. He was mentally, uh, 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 you know, that he was suffering from. There's one that happened the other day, and they say that the child has been depressed. What kind of year, year depression have you been? They, so that depression is what you use in killing other children. Why don't you kill yourself? You are a steward of that child's destiny. That child cannot turn around and be controlling you. Children, when they throw tantrums and all that, you become anxious and all of that. Sir, sir if you finish that tantrum, you will come down in this house. Because if God gave you to me, I have your medicine. Listen, parenting, I need you to understand. Never you take the seat of a child and your child will take the seat of a parent. He's not happy. Then you start begging him. He's not happy for no reason. What is wrong with you? Yes, we can have conversations and we're going to talk, but I'm going to instruct you, you know, it's not good like this. It's not good. No, no, no. The Bible says foolishness. Eh? Foolishness. Break it there in the heart of children. But the Bible says the rod of correction will drive it far. There's so much resources God has put in this side of you. Don't become a child so that your daughter or your child, your, your son, will become a parent. Can, can, I, can, I, can I shock you? Can I shock you a bit? You know how your children will be acting like they don't know what sex is? These guys here. They'll be acting like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. What are they talking about? Wait until they download. You knew, you yourself, you knew when you knew what sex is. There was no internet that time. These children are internet children. You are talking to them when they move out. Internet is talking to them. If they are not, internet is not talking to them. Some bad children from nowhere, they are coming from. You are in a warfare. Don't sleep on a bicycle. People of God, away from that, the God of this world has arisen. That is a God of this world. The type of dragon that I spoke about, waiting for this child to be born. Mandated, familiar spirit. The same things that kept your father down is now digitalized, looking for a way to find your child. 
until they meet Jesus to know Jesus the way you know the child please stand in the place of warfare stand and protect say this is not gonna happen they say pray break the thing and any wrong thing they are told flush it out of their mind the next day keep their minds at blank play people of God prayers walk let your children see the evidence of your prayer that the first thing that any child will do at any point in time is let me call my mother let me call my father. Let me, let me talk to my mother. My, 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 my father needs to pray about this. My mother needs to pray about this. It is a warfare. Am I communicating? Yes, let me also say this to every parent here. I am going to number four. Like I said, my assignment here is a brief, a very, very brief. I want you to know that. Don't raise your children in the atmosphere of your weakness. I want you to know that even your weakness are transferable. Did you hear what I just said? Let me give you an example. I'm not here to do, say spooky things that don't have a biblical. That is how Abraham woke up one day. Eh? Abraham woke up one day and he lied. How many of you remember that? Abraham lied. And you know why he lied? Why are you all looking at me like that? He lied because of who? Sarah, his wife. Did you realize that Isaac told the same lie? Why did Isaac lie? Because of his wife. The same scenario repeated itself again. People of God, it was just, the whole thing was transferred. Deal with your weaknesses so that you will not become a pattern for your kids. In Abraham's own, it was just a weakness. But by the time it was getting to why Isaac was, it had become a pattern. Whatever leaves a generation and gets into the next one is multiplied. Deal, fight, tell yourself, you see weakness, I will fight. If they use woman to do me, I will fight it and fight it to the, even if I am being tempted for the sake of the fact that I don't want this child women to destroy the destiny of this child am I communicating sir fight the weakness to it. for these ones you love for these ones you are laboring for for this one because at the end of the day what I what I what, what I after all is said and done our children are all we have after all is said and done our children are all we have Stop your weakness. All this lie you are busy telling. Don't worry. When your children will reward you, we'll show you the restoration of lie. And when they are being restored, it's restoration with compensation. Lift up your right hand. Declare any weakness in my life that will affect my children. Say, let it be broken. Say it again. Let it be broken. Shout it again. Let it be broken. Shout it again. Let it be broken. Thunder it again, let it be broken. Take your seat. And you know the truth is that for some people, you may not necessarily, you may not necessarily, your children may not necessarily walk in the same weakness that you walked in. But your weakness will open a door for some terrible things to start going on in their lives. And then, because you don't sit back and say, oh, Pastor, uh, my kids are okay. They don't lie like myself. They don't like like. But then again, your lying would have opened the door for the children to be hurt in ways that you cannot even imagine. Am I communicating? Sir, let me also remind every parent here. I said it before, but I'll keep repeating it here for as long as you are under me. And you're, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depend. Train up a child in the way he should go. Let me say it one more time for the opting time. If I have to train up the child in the way he should go, I should know the way he should go so that I will know how to train him so the first person that gets a blueprint about a child's life it's not the child it is you the first person who should know what the child should study not out of your emotions or competition or trying to comply to that it should be you it should be you sir something tells me even though we don't see that black and white in the scripture. How did Moses wake up one morning and the Bible will speak in the book of Hebrews, right? He chose not to be called 
the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Where did that come from? Where did these guys mental? Something tells me. You see that the mother that they brought and said the mother should take care of him. And all that. It wasn't by revelation. The Bible says he chose not to be called and he knew where his ancestry was. Something is telling me that the mother eh, kept telling him as he was, he was just listen. Forget all these things we are doing here. Forget this place we are here. This is not your home. This is not your home. You are my child. It's just that some things happened and crawfish was bent. But even at that, this is not where you ought to be. And boom, when the guy was grown, he now chose not to be called the daughter. You can't tell me your mother raised you and did not leave a seed in you. It was the mom they asked, take care of the, come and take care of the, the woman must have laid. If she did not speak a word, she made a prayer. I must say, boom, chose not to be called the daughter. I can't be called, I can't be here. You would rather choose to go and fight, behave like an aburo, behave like a, instead of settling down in the palace. There was something that guy knew. There was something I came to beg you. Sit back and say to God, even if it, 21 days is not only for the beginning of the year. Lord, if I'm unsure about what my children should do, please speak to me. Let me pray them into it. Let's begin to have conversation. Let me begin to navigate them. Let me tell you something. Your child did not wake up one morning and then jam form comes and the child say, you know, he said he has, he wants to be, you know, a doctor. He said he wants to be a lawyer. No, sir. When you are having that conversation, by reason of socialization and exposure, the child has already had a mental build up, waiting for that time when he will make a choice based on exposure and socialization. But listen, the conversation you have with him begins at the point you feel this child has reached here. But then again, the child's decision is a product of all the socializations that the child has been through. But you are a late comer in the conversation. And so when you begin the conversation, the child has already been socialized to take a decision and then you sit back and say, I don't want to force him against his will. If you know on time, you will begin to socialize the child along what God has already told you. And when the fullness of time comes, the conversation will be easy. But that is me taking it even too far. As I'm talking to you now, you don't even know. Pastor, that's a big problem. We don't even know. And the child comes and says something. You agree. Most children do it. Sometimes they don't have God hasn't called us to raise average children. God hasn't called us to raise average. Listen. As far as you're a member of this commission, as your amen will thunder, your children will be exceptional. I said they will speak with the enemies at the gates. Your children will not embarrass you. No seed of the enemy will remain in your children. Let your amen thunder louder. Your children will not lack help when they need it. Your children will not see shame. They will not see sorrow. Let your amen thunder louder. And people of God are away from making life's choices based on purpose and other things. Know the way you should go. There are people that walk into your child. People of God, when your child starts hanging around the wrong person, by the time you're praying, the Spirit of God will point it out to you. I say there's somebody that is, you know, talking to your child that is not meant to be talking to your child. And then you go back and there, call the child. Say, who are you? Who is this person? And so, so, and so time. And then the child will tell you. And you say, no, that's not the will of God. And then you come, because I know the way you should go. Listen, not every good person is a fit for your child. Never forget that. They are good. They come from good homes where you're not his feet. Mm -mm. So don't sit back and say, but they are nice. I know their mother. I know their father. I know everything about them. People of God, I want you to know that they are nice people. Does not mean that their parents are even good people speaking in tongues. Does not mean that you need them around your life. Don't let me tell you some stories. Today is not story. Today is Bible right because i want you to understand this is how we do you know many times our parents believe that because you are good you are you are attending church and carrying bible and all that they 
allowed us to mingle with people whose children are morally bankrupt. Morally bankrupt. And then you're getting there. Because you're not the one going to tell your mother, you know that the, the, these children are not good people. Because even the seed of our seed, the Adamic nature, was, is looking for an expression, even in a house that is godly. May our children not embarrass us. What we did not teach them, they will not learn. Let your amen thunder louder. Am I making sense? I said this before, but I'm going to repeat it one more time. Please, do prophetic actions with your children. Never stop doing prophetic things. Being on NSPB for a while, and with all that I do, and I see that every time you listen to testimonies on NSPB, listen to learn. Not just for shouting, not just for... Do prophetic things. Do prophet... I say it again. Anoint your children every now and then. While they are sleeping, get their pictures. Do some things. Call them on the phone. Pray over them again and again. Look for... Them. Sometimes, you know, just try. If, it's, if they can come home from wherever they are, every once in a while, once in one year, once in two years, and all of that. Strengthen... Do it now that you are alive. Do it now that they can see you. Raise a culture. Let them know that you know, I'm not here to play. You. I know what I am doing. I know that. Don't do it. Make, get everything. Let, listen. Listen. Somebody must be at the gate. When you are at the gate, don't let your children think that you are not. Stay at the gate. Do prophetic things with your children. Whatever it is, do it. This is what it is. This is how it is. This is what it is. Sir, you know that Rebecca, eh? forget that she did something wrong. This lady was pregnant. I think her name is Rebecca. Eh? Rebecca is Isaac's uh, wife. Eh? And then some movements were going on in her belly. You remember? Were going on in her womb. And she had to go and inquire of the Lord. As she went to inquire of the Lord, the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. But the younger one will now be the greater, will be greater than the older one. And then the father was now looking for venison, you know, so that he can and now bless the first one. The woman said, yeah, that's not it. This prophecy, I remember a prophecy that was given that the prophecy, the older, they went about it the wrong way. But here's a woman who was committed to fulfilling what she had. Sir, do you know the way they should go? Do you know the way? And if you know the way they should go, do prophetic things. Do prophet every now and then. Don't be tired of it. Don't be tired of it. They may not be with you all the time, but when you have the opportunity, lay your hands on their clothes. Except this Christianity is a lie. Except this Christianity, this thing we're doing is a lie. When you have the opportunity, get the anointing oil and all of that. Lord of God, do things. So I'm telling you, do things. Do things. Now that you plan mixing cream and calling it organic, miss this one, miss this one. Put oil in their anointing oil in their cream. It is called organic. It, it, it cannot kill anybody. It is just ordinary anointing oil that do them give them organic, organic anointing every and because I want make it prophetic. Don't let them second guess who you are and what you believe in. Correct mother, digital father, and all that. Very common. You are, you are, you are pressed, but let them know that, man, you have you, you, you believe in this God in a rugged manner. You are rugged about it in this house. We, we pray, we take communion. In this house, prayer is important. And all that. Nobody sleeps when morning altar is on. No, 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 no. We don't do that. If you sleep, we'll help you wake up. Yes. You know how we have you wake up? Yes. Where have you wake up? So, and this is what it is. Communicate. Ah, it was said to Timothy when Paul was talking to him. He said that, that, that the great faith, the unfeigned faith that was in you, that, that, that was in your grandmother, that was also in your mother. Hey! A generation that was passing it, passing it from one place to another, passing it one. And I want you to know, do prophetic things over the lives of your children again and again. I want to because we know the physical ones 
we know the fiscal ones. That's why I'm concentrating on the spiritual. Can I say this to every parent? Please hear me. What every other parent is doing should not be for your own children. I want you, when you find the uniqueness of your children, you know that you cannot be plugging into trends. You will be plugging into People say, oh no, you don't try that. You don't try that. Oh no, you didn't hear what I heard. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. When you understand child. You see, some of our parents saw greatness, but they didn't know how to plug us there. But it is a blessing for you to see greatness in your children. And God has blessed you a little in how to plug them into that greatness. Don't do it because every other person is doing it. Don't send them to school because every other person is being sent to school. Don't do the things every other person is doing. For without our dogs, I must find a destiny fit for my children. I must find what is it. What, so this is why I say, you see parenting is not a walk in the park. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. It's not a walk in the park. See parents, my mandate to you is not a, man of perf a mandate of perfect parenting. But it is diligently following the rudiment of God in order to make sure that these children's destinies are birthed into greatness. Am I communicating? So that one must be at the back of your mind. Let me say this. Whatever your foundation is, always remember you are responsible for the foundation that will speak for or speak against your children. You. You that is looking at me, you are responsible for the foundation that will speak for them or speak against them. What am I saying? Can you build a foundation that will always speak for your children? Build a foundation. I'm not talking about negativities right now. I've dealt with them. Build a foundation that will speak for your children. People of God, when you serve, it is not wrong. As you serve and say, God, use my service and bless my children. Use my service. No, let everything I do, let my children be the one that will repeat. I've always told you about my mother that will buy um, um, Uvatin, buy milk, buy uh, whatever, and all that, and give me to carry it to Ezebula for street, and go and give, uh, you know, and give pastor and all that. I should go and give pastor. Something we're not drinking in our house. That's what we're going to pack and be giving pastor and all that. We never drank over it. We never drank. My mother would buy them big, big, you know. I've always told you the very saddest thing about that, that, that gesture is that every time I go to their house, that our pastor, uh, them, their house, they be, they, me, I know I'm the one that brought this thing because my mother gave it to me. There, and I just be asking them, give me, you know, as little children, all you wanted to lick was milk. Let them, let them just put the powdered milk in, your, in, your, in my hand. Let me just say, they will not give me. They, they will not give me. But every now and then, we will buy. I, know, I can't remember how frequent. My, my mom was very frequent with doing that. One day I had to come from, I've told you this story before. I had to come, and my mom said, everything I'm doing, I am doing it for you. He said, he said everything I'm doing, I'm doing it for you. Did it make sense? Of course not. But every day when I walk into things, Every day when I see things, I say, whoa, this is my mother's sacrifice. I said it to you people the last time I, sp I spoke. I pray, oh, I pray. And I know God responds and answer. But I look at my life. I say, Kai, the way they happen, I know I am reaping some things that I did not do. I know God is fighting for me because there's a woman who staked her life for my own life. I know things are opening up. Things will just open. And I just know that God, you are the one. This woman, this, this woman. I mean, people of God, I never, I never prayed 
that oh let global global visibility come upon me no i never pray i never made that prayer i knew god was going to use me i knew things were going to happen but if there was anybody who kept praying that the world will hear your voice the world will hear your voice till she died was my mother If there was anybody who kept saying, this thing you're doing is not what God told me. Look at what God told me. And it was my mother. She made the prayer, I am reaping the harvest. I said this the last time. Don't fight someone whose mother has an active altar. Don't ever, don't ever, you don't have an idea. I face battles, real battles. But every time, I remember that yeah yeah a woman has prayed so much you don't they think people things just work for some people and you wonder why why but they don't even know this but they don't even know that somebody has has prayed jaja i came to let you know that every part of what you do people of god do things they may not understand your children may not understand nobody will understand but I need you to understand. Lay the foundation of what they will reap. Lay the foundation. Do you know Job was the one that would go and make sacrifice? I don't know what my children are doing. Whether they are doing the wrong thing or whether they are doing the right thing. Let me shall sacrifice on their behalf. Let me shall just do this on their behalf. And, not, and then you sit and you're not, you know, you're not putting seed together for your children every now and then. What? You're not raising sacrifices on their behalf. Are you okay? Like you're not putting something together and say, Lord, I'm doing this for my children. You're not putting seed into this and say, this is for my children and all of that. This was my, I told you what an illiterate woman I was doing. I was sending it to Isabella for street. Look at today. I sit back and I say to myself, you know, what an amazing way to live. What an amazing way to see the hand of God. Because a woman chose to do it. I came to beg you lay the foundation i'm responsible for how their lives will turn out how the lives of my children will turn out i'm responsible i will lay the right foundation people of god let me tell you let me tell you everything does not end in smartness i've seen very well behaved smart children but they died untimely smart well behaved but they, that one that the child will look like an angel that is coming from heaven but for some reason they die untimely. I've also seen some people with different, at different ways. So you just see pockets of the, you just shall know at the end of the day, let's just run back to God. Lay there for whatever it will take. Pray the prayer, talk the talk, do all that you can and all of that. But at the end of the day, I need you to understand that every sacrifice you're making, please plug it into your family. Say, God, remember this. God, remember. Hezekiah had to make the prayer. And he said, God, remember, I've walked before you. Remember what I have done. So everyone who is serving here and all that, you are washing toilet, you are cleaning things, you are starting, and you are doing, working for God in this house and all of that. When you are done, pray. When you are done serving, just pray and say, God, behold my service. Behold my service. There are things, except, let me tell you, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't practice talk, talk Christianity and all. I like to have people put their own Christianity into works. Let your service speak. Lord, remember, at so, so, and so time, let it be this. Let me say this as I get ready to tidy up. Please, however you will do it, try and do it. Let the loudest voice, your children hear, be your voice. Not in the tonality or intensity, but in the spiritual force that it comes with. This is too much. This thing I've said is too much. But let the loudest voice. Your children are going to go through. Your children are going to go through. I mean, you don't understand. Let the loudest voice they will hear be your voice. Until God helped a woman break a cycle. A negative cycle this woman had four children and all four children turned against her after training them after making them become and after and this is why i say to everyone all those people prophesying to you people up and down your mother is a witch your this one is a witch your this other one is a witch and all of that and 
even if your parents, your father or your mother is a witch, if they have not killed you up until now, please treat their own witchcraft differently. I know what, why I'm saying what I'm saying and all that. Because if they have not killed, your mother is a witch. I know when your mother should have killed you. It's not even today's own. And then you are now, you are now, because you are not yet, you are not married up till now. One useless, frustrated prophetess will come and tell you that your mother is a witch. Wow, how smart. Your father is a witch. They are responsible for what is going on. I, I'm not, pastor, are you saying this? Of course I've seen that happen. It happens and it's true. But I'm asking you, treat their witchcraft differently. Oh, yes. You will not say, that's why I'm not going to talk to you again. Or they, if I talk to you now, if I call them, witchcraft would leave their mouth and just enter my body. As soon as I, I, I talk to my mother and all of it. Your problem is not their witchcraft. Your problem is your powerlessness. Ooh, you are not powerful. When you are powerful, when you are powerful, no matter how much of witchcraft it is, you will deliver, you will deliver your mother. You will deliver your father. You will speak a word. The foundations will break. Because I am, I am sick. I'm tired of families broken up. You know, I mean, parents and children abandoning their parents and all of that because there was one prophetess. There's one prophet that said something here. Another, he said, and all of all these people that know how to bring two people's head and then they will knock it together. Let the loudest voice your children will hear. Let it be your own. Our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name our generation shall your heart to God just say to God this is the way I want my family to be this way I want my children to be whether you are married or not can you just say to God Lord please Lord please if you can mention the name of each and every one of your children come on this Lord this is the way I want them to turn out this is the way this is what I, I desire to see in each and every one of them father please Father, please, let your mercy, wherever I have not, I have not done well, wherever I have failed, but let your mercy, this is what I want. If you are single, this is the best time to make the prayer. This is the best time to make the prayer. Break the backbone of any mistake I have made. Break the backbone of any mistake I have made. Let mercy, let mercy, let mercy, let mercy. Can you tell God, pour out your heart, pour out your heart, call all of them by name, and tell God what you desire, tell God what you desire, tell God what you desire. Father, we thank you. Lord, show us mercy. 
show our families mercy. Lord, we represent a new breed. We represent a new bloodline. Father, let the old be broken. Let your blood swallow our mistakes. And let there be new chapters of your grace. Let your mercy speak loud. Let your mercy speak loud. Let your mercy speak loud. Our families will fulfill destiny. Our children must fulfill destiny. It is done. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. In case the first time you come here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more uploads.